Hola a todos y bienvenidos a Semana Uno. This week we're going to be focusing on present tense regular verbs. Now, this is kind of like your foundation to speaking Spanish, so you really want to make sure that you have this down. Typically, a sentence is made up of a subject, a verb, and an object. The subject is the thing that does the action. Uh, the verb is the action. And then the object is what is being affected by that verb. Super simplistic. English teachers would probably hate me for saying that kind of stuff, but that is kind of your basic definitions for what you want to be doing in these first few years of Spanish. So let's get into this. Uh, what is an infinitive verb? Well, quite frankly, an infinitive verb is the simplest form of verb. You can't do anything with it. Uh, typically, you have to conjugate it. We'll get into what that means in just a second. Now, how would you know it's an infinitive verb? At these beginning levels of Spanish, an infinitive verb is going to end in AR, ER, or IR. Those are your three different endings. Okay, so a note about the infinitive. It's the simplest form. You can't really use it. Sometimes it does come in handy because that is our version in English of a verb where it is like to jump, to run, to swim, to eat, to study. All right, we always put that to in front of it. So occasionally you're going to combine it with another verb like I want to go, right? So to go would be an infinitive verb. I want would be the conjugated verb. So sometimes it's useful, but it just can't stand alone, okay? Now verb is made up of two parts. You have the stem or the root, and then you have the ending. Stem and root are interchangeable, and that's because in Spanish you'll often hear it called a raíz, which literally means root. Uh, and then in English, sometimes we just default to stem, but they mean essentially the same thing. All right, so that's one end of the verb, and then the other end is the ending, right? That A-R-E-R-I-R. -E Now that one word conjugate means when you change your verb, in this case an infinitive verb, to fit your time, and your subject. Your time periods are past, present, and future. Uh, later on, you'll learn this thing called the subjunctive. Don't worry about that now. And your subject, again, going back to our definition of subject, is the thing doing the action. Now in Spanish, sometimes things get crazy because you don't always mention who the subject is. The reason for that is all of the endings are different. And so you actually know who the subject is by the verb. It might sound weird right now, but as we get into an example, you'll understand what I mean. All right, so let's run through our subjects. And in this case, we're going to talk about a subject pronoun. Uh, subject pronoun is a word that replaces a subject. So for instance, I have a dog. My dog's name is Alby. And when I tell a story about Alby, I don't say Alby, 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 Alby. Eventually, I change Alby to she and she would be the subject pronoun, okay? Now, let's break down what our subject pronouns are in Spanish. Yo means I. Tu means you. Now we use that for informal situations. You're talking to somebody you know really well. Uh, there's a mutual respect at a certain level. It's, it's not a very formal situation. And then we have el, which means he. Ella means she. Usted means you. And that is a formal way of saying you. So for instance, if you're a student and you want to show respect to a teacher or your parents or something like that, you'll use usted. Then we have nosotros, which means we. Vosotros which is you, but there's a bunch of you. So it's a pluralized, right? Like when I talk to my students, I have a lot of students, so I'm talking to all of you. It's also an informal all of you, but they only use it in Spain. Talk about a lot of different caveats to that word. That's just how it rolls. And then we have ellos, which is they. Ellas, which is also they. But that's if that group that is they that you're talking about is only girls. And then we have ustedes, 
Now, ustedes, again, is like the pluralized version of usted, uh, but in Latin America, they just use that all the time for when you're addressing multiple yous. So like y'all, you guys, all of you, that, that usage, okay? I know some of the use can be kind of confusing. All the other words are pretty easy. Uh, just spend a little bit of time studying that. And as you're listening to Spanish, it'll get a lot easier. So don't stress out too much. Okay, so again, we have three types of infinitive verbs. AR verbs, ER verbs, and IR verbs. If you learn the AR list, you can get the ER and IR very, very easily. Okay, so how do we conjugate? Uh, it's super easy. Remember, we're changing this infinitive verb to fit your time. In this case, we're talking about the present tense and your subject, whoever's in this little chart that we just filled out. There's two steps to conjugating. Step one is to drop your ending, that A-R, E-R, I-R. Super easy. Uh, step two would be to add your new ending, depending on who your subject is, because remember, Conjugating is changing your infinitive verb to fit the time. In this case, we're talking about the present tense and your person, which in this case would be our subject pronoun that we're going to be comparing these charts with. All right. Your new ending, if your subject is yo, is o. Your new ending, if your subject is tu, is as. The new ending, if your subject is el, ella, or usted, is a. Those three share the same ending. That can get kind of confusing in a storyline if nobody's using subjects, so it's always best to use the subjects when you're talking about a bunch of different people. Your new ending, if your subject is nosotros, is amos. The new ending, if your subject is vosotros, is ais. And that letter A gets an accent mark or a tilde. And then ellos, ellas, ustedes all share a common ending as well. And that ending is going to be an. All right. So we just covered our present tense AR verbs. And what does that mean for your ER verbs? Well, very simply, what you're going to do to get your ER chart is take all of the letter A and change them to the letter E. So for your ER verbs, it's going to be O for yo, S for tu, el, ella, and usted becomes a, nosotros becomes amos, vosotros becomes ace, and ellos, ellas, ustedes becomes n. Now finally, we have the IR verbs. The IR verbs are the same as the ER chart, except for nosotros and vosotros. Those are the only two that are different. So again, yo, o, tu, s, el, e, usted, a. Then we have nosotros becomes imos, which makes sense. It's an IR verb. Vosotros becomes is, and there's a tilde on that I. Ellos, ellas, ustedes is the same as your ER, so it is N. So let's take a couple examples about this and look at some words that might be familiar. Uh, for instance, I love to swim. I swim all the time. It's my favorite thing to do. All right, so I am going to say I swim. The verb to swim would be our infinitive verb nadar. We're going to drop that ending at our new ending for yo because yo is I. And we look at our chart, compare it that O on there and we get yo nado. That means I swim. Now, if I want to combine this with other verbs, like I love to swim, some verbs are going to conjugate, the other verbs are going to leave in the infinitive. So the verb amar is to love. We're going to drop our AR, put the O on there because I love. And then how do you say to swim? That's going to be our infinitive. Then we just put those together. Yo amo nadar. So once you get a verb list and you start messing around with these, it becomes really easy to describe your day. So for instance, yo nado, yo amo nadar, yo nado con mis hijos, Lincoln y Sawyer. Ellos nadan mucho, Sawyer ama nadar. 
So you can see how just jumping around this chart and using some of our high frequency verbs, you can really start crushing Spanish. I know this is a lot of information. For some of you, it's a review. For some of you, it's brand new. Go through on the next day. You're going to spend some time reading, and you'll see all of this as examples. I hope this helps, and good luck.